Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. Yes, in every generation on the earth, God sends special messengers with unique messages to fulfill His word in their dispensation. Whether through the Emancipator, church services, special conferences like the New Christian Conference or the Good Life Devotion, carefully listen, watch and read the message of life and of the divinity of the church ministered by Dr. David Bindan as ordained by God in the scriptures to mature the body of Christ into the full measure of the stature of Christ. Dr. David Bindan taking us on our journey in Christ into sinlessness, sicklessness, deathlessness, lacklessness and leaving us manifested sons of God to the glory of our Father. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the divine life experience of sinless holiness, incorruptible health, deathlessness, and reigning in life as a son of God in the full measure of the stature of Christ. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord, hallelujah. How are you doing? I believe you are enjoying a cruise in this advanced course on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remember that our aim has been from the very beginning to bring you this uh, teaching from a functional perspective. And we are talking about a perspective that will make you more available, a better vessel for the Holy Spirit to express himself through. And so it's not just an impartation of knowledge, but beyond that is um, a proper positioning of you as a son, a daughter of God, for the Spirit of God to uh, work through you, to be a blessing to your world and the church. So as a build up on the basic course, we started off by giving you an introduction. And in that introduction, we made it clear that this week we're going to delve deeper into the practicality of uh, the gifts issues about the desire of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, issues concerning the impartation of the gifts, and then issues about the operation of the gifts. And in our following episode, um, we took a look at the truth that it begins with the Holy Spirit. In that episode, I remember my wife brought up the example of uh, a source of water and the water itself. If you have to choose, it's better to choose the source so that you can always have the water. Because if you go for the water, at a point you may not have it again. But if you have the source, you always have the water. And that was referring to the Holy Spirit. And we explained that as a child of God, it's not now that you are going to have the Holy Spirit. If you are born again, the Bible said, Therefore, by one spirit have we all been baptized into one body and have been made to drink into one spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. So if you have received Christ, you are already one with the Holy Spirit. When we talk about having the source, we mean a deeper love for the person of the Holy Ghost and a deeper walk with him. You know, so today we are going to move forward and um, our topic today is how gifts of the Holy Spirit work. So this is about a practical exhibition of the gift as we promised you from the beginning. Once again, I'm here with my beautiful wife, Thank you for coming again. Thank you again to be here. All right. It's been, it's been awesome having you. you. Yes, I just remembered, you know, when you were mentioning a son of God, and I said, 
you know, um, there are people who have, and I remember I wrote a book and I was using Son of God, Son of God. And somebody questioned why we're always saying Son of God. So another book I had to be using Son and Daughter, Son and Daughter. <laughs> but you see, you have to understand that the Bible says that in Christ, there's neither male nor female. And when the people came to ask Jesus about the resurrection, what did he say? He said in the resurrection, there's no giving into marriage and all that. So um, the gender that we see, or the genders that we see in the body are for earthly function. In the spirit, there's no male spirit or female spirit. And so the Bible speaks that way. And some people don't like the Bible because they say the Bible is gender unfriendly. It's against uh, women or, no, it's not that. God speaks to us as sons of God. You can be a son of God in a, in a female body or a son of God in a male body. Are you catching it? So son of God is the actual name for the born again. Mm. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12. For as many as received into them, he gave power to become sons of God. And he didn't say this with derogation to any female-bodied person. Okay, so you were accurate in using that term. Uh, just that <laughs> we have a lot of viewers, so I just wanted to let them understand why that was going on. Anyway, so how the gifts of the Holy Spirit work. Can you take a read at our scripture for us? So our scripture today is from um, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 CJB. Mm. It says that, moreover, to each person is given the particular manifestation of the Spirit mm. that will be for the common good. Mm. Wow, read again. Moreover, mm -hmm. to each person mm -hmm. is given the manifestation of the Spirit mm -hmm. that will be for the common good. Mm. Again, it's like we've quoted this verse several yeah. this week, and um, I think the first they were read it from the NET, yeah. and today from the complete Jewish Bible. And it, it keeps stressing these three things. Moreover, to each person. Moreover, to each person. So if you are watching us, have you been a Christian for five years, two years, three years? Can you say that the Holy Spirit has manifested this way through me? If not, something is wrong. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. Why is this so? Why do we have people in church two years, three years, five years, 15 years, and they can't remember the last time that a gift or gifts of the Spirit operated through them? Because it's to each person. That means that you too. Then it says, is given the particular manifestation of the Spirit. So it is the manifestation of the Spirit. Then the last part, that will be for the common the good. Common good. So again, all that we are teaching you is to make you more beneficial as a member of that church, more beneficial as a person on the earth today. So the ultimate goal of the gift of the Spirit is not some carnal or human or selfish gain, admiration, start of ministry, and all these things. It is so that it will be for the common good of people. Oh, I just love to stay here. I want to say something before we move on. Wow. The verse is loaded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so from what you said, mm. I mean, it's clear mm. that um, each of us, mm. I mean, when you are a child of God, mm. you, you have the gifts of God. Are you stop using your son of God? <laughs> no. All right, please yeah. <laughs> You have the gifts of the Holy Spirit mm. inside of you. Mm. All right, so you should know mm. that you can operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You should know. Yeah. And you said something that will come there in the week. You should know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit can operate through you. Yeah. You see, yeah. we say you can operate, and it's intentional. Yeah. We'll come there yeah. to explain that. But you should, know that you should know that the gifts of the Spirit can operate through you. should know it. And there's a reason why you should know. Because when you know, you, you are well positioned for them to flow. Yeah. All right, are you there? Yeah. All right. So we can start reading now what we have in the man's Peter. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Though everyone in the body of Christ has a unique or unique gift of the Holy Spirit through them, mm. some never have it realized in their lives, mm. while some others also get this abused mm. through various forms of carnality. <laughs> this is important. I remember uh, two weeks ago when we started on the basic course, uh, someone asked that... Um, 
If we say that the gifts were the Holy Spirit's own manifestation, then how can somebody abuse them or corrupt them? You know. So it means we are, we are there now. Because the statement you read said that even though everybody has a unique gift or unique gifts, we have two extremes here now. The first extreme um, is the group of people that have never in their lives had the realization of the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. Yet everyone has. Then the, the other extreme are those who are having the gift manifest in them so much that they are beginning to abuse the gifts or corrupt the gifts. Now, just read the next sentence and let me see something. One reason accounting for this is a lack of appropriate knowledge concerning how these gifts really work. Very succinctly stated. So, why is it possible that someone in the body of Christ indwelt by the Holy Spirit who is willing to manifest through them any time, any moment to meet needs in the church and in the world and yet it's like he's locked up. Why is it that somebody through whom the Holy Spirit is manifesting there is this possibility of what we call the gift being corrupted or abused. We said one important reason accounting for this which of the extremes is inappropriate knowledge concerning how these gifts work. If a person has the appropriate knowledge as to how these gifts work, nobody will be without the gifts manifesting through him. And everybody will pretty genuinely, will have a genuine oppression of the gifts through them. There will be no abuse or corruption. Um, when we talk about somebody not having the gifts realized, what the person is doing is what we call quenching the spirit or resisting the spirit. Let's read the scripture in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Mm -hmm. Quench not the spirit. <laughs> so simple, right? <laughs> Quench not the spirit. Now, this is the Holy Ghost. What do you mean by quench not the Holy Spirit? Who can quench him? But it is possible. Like we mentioned, I think in the first episode this week or the second, that why we are sharing this is to help people be able to become better partners with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't work on the earth without a person. And so this is where we come in in the equation. He wants to do something, and that's why he lives in us. Or something must be done through us. One of the reasons why he came to live in us is to get that thing out. But we are not like, uh, 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 let's say, robots. We are willing beings. And he requires the usage of our will to align with his for him to be able to work through. Now, imagine he wants to work through you, and because you don't know, you are not allowing him. What happens? He's not able to flow. I remember a young man who said he has been desiring the gift of speaking in other tongues. Okay, he called it a gift. He was born again and kind of, hadn't received the feeling of the Holy Spirit. So I met him and we spoke, and basically it was because of knowledge he didn't have. I explained the, the scriptures, and prayed with him. He just started flowing in the, in, in the language of the Spirit. Now, what kept him from speaking in other tongues? It wasn't because there was no Holy Ghost in him. All trance was there all the time. But sometimes, either wrong knowledge or lack of knowledge makes you unable to yield. Some people come and say, Pastor, I desire to speak in tongues. And when you minister to them, they're sitting down there. Let us pray. They shut their mouth. Expecting the Holy Ghost to become like a machine that will be opening their jaws up and down. In many cases, it won't happen. I'm not saying that that's not possible. But you see, the Holy Ghost, let me use this word, doesn't own your mouth. Mm. He wants you to agree with him by faith. Mm. What did the Bible say in Acts chapter 2 verse 4? So they spoke as the Spirit gave utterance. The Bible didn't say the Spirit of God spoke. He said that they did the speaking, but the Spirit gave the utterance. You see, so it is your body. He wants to express in you as the utterance of knowledge. Now, if you sit down and you don't open your mouth because you don't know, he's not going to be able to flow. So without the appropriate knowledge, people quench him. 
And that was in Psalm, it never gets manifested. Now, I think we should go on a short break. When we come back, then I'll look at the other extreme of the possibility of abuse or the possibility of um, um, misuse or something like that of the gift. We'll be right back after this break. Oh, hallelujah. Guess what? The final global movement brings the whole world to major live revolutionized administrations, all beginning in one month. What are these? Number one. Yes, just before you go to church every Sunday, beginning from 21st of July 2024, spice your spirit up by joining the appetizer before church ABC with Dr. David Bindan and receive the present truth of the message of life and the divinity of the church. It is this message of life and the divinity of the church that the apostles of Jesus Christ preached, the apostle Paul preached, but the dark ages buried it. And this is the message that the Lord has sent me to this whole world to bring to the world, to bring the body of Christ onto that state of the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. It's two live revolutionizing ministrations starting in one month. Number two. While preparing the whole world to step into this state of incorruptible health, he blessed the world with the church by giving the church various means of healings. By faith, by laying of hands, anointing with oil, and uh, healing gifts and all that. But one of those means that he has given to me to bring to the world is to help people be restored to their state of health through the word. And this is what we're gonna bring into the whole world in what we call our journey into health, incorruption, and deathlessness. Hallelujah. Our journey into health, incorruption, and deathlessness happens on the third Friday of every month at 3 p.m. Venue is the Good Life Center 2, Collegono. Appetizer before church, ABC, with Dr. David Bendan, comes off this and every Sunday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., at the Good Life Center 2, Collegono. Join these ministrations live on David Bindon Live on Facebook and YouTube and also available for a later listen on Dr. Bindon Podcast. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are back. We've been dealing with how the gifts of the Spirit work. So here we are dealing with the practicality of the exhibition of the gifts. Then we said that though everybody in the body of Christ has either a gift or gifts. In other words, the Holy Ghost is ready to uh, express himself through them in one way or many ways. Yet there are people that have sat in church for long and the Holy Spirit has never been able, in quote, to express himself in any way through them. We said that is one extreme. The other extreme is some are having him express himself so much through them that they get to a place that they abuse it. And we're explaining that one reason accounting for these extremes is a lack of the appropriate knowledge of how the gifts were. So we are about to come there. But I was explaining the, how these uh, extremes happen. Now we explain that the reason why he doesn't operate through some is because they don't know, so they don't allow him. The other reason, uh, the other part which is the abuse, this is how it works. We explain that when it comes to the gifts of healings, mm. then it is, it is the word yama, not the word uh, uh, therapy, mm. which is it's talking about the means of healing. The Holy Ghost manifests himself as the means of healing. So imagine there are five people to heal. And the first one, the Spirit expresses himself in you by saying, receive. So it's, you, you start, receive, healed, receive, healed. But by the third one, he wants you to touch. But because you're already flowing in, receive, receive. If you're not working well with him, 
you want to go to the next one and say receive again. When at that point, the Holy Spirit is saying touch. Because the reason why it is called the means is because the Holy Spirit knows what will resonate with the person to be able to help the person's healed state to be realized. Now you think that because received work here, received work there, the third one received should work. But he knows the means is expressing himself. Are you catching it? So in that way, in terms of his expression, if you don't continue to align with what he's doing, you can take off and say receive when he hasn't said it. Are you getting that? So you are now trying to make the gift work in a way that he didn't want to work. And that is how abuse comes in. Sometimes for the sake of the person, he may still work. But as you keep on in that way, because you are now experiencing the way it works, you take off and you begin to do things that are not really aligned with what he's doing. That is when we say the gifts are abused. Not because he is abused, yeah. but when he is not moving, and you are moving because you are used to his moving, <laughs> yeah. then that's where the deviation comes in. An Old Testament example just came. It doesn't fit in here, but maybe it may help you to understand it. Look at uh, uh, Samson. He was full of, I mean, the spirit was on him. And then anytime people came, he would shake himself. But the spirit left at a point and he didn't know. So he now wanted to, he said, let them come, I'll do something. He did it, nothing showed up. The spirit was no more there. So it was catastrophic for him. This is how the gifts can be abused or corrupted. So when we say the gifts are corrupted, it's not that you have corrupted the Holy Ghost, you cannot corrupt him. But when he's not moving that way, but because he has been moving that way in you several times, you think that he's moving that way, you are going that way, it is now you. And one danger of that is that if you are not very aligned with him, if you go too long on that path, you can allow the evil spirit to begin to work with you in doing things that you think is the Holy Ghost. And there are people that have deviated for a long time and they still think it's the Holy Ghost when it's not the Holy Ghost. Are you getting this? You want to say something before we go ahead? Wow, I've just been so blessed, mm. you know. So, from what you said, not having the appropriate knowledge of how the, um, the gifts work, mm. um, it's not so good because when you get used to how the spirit works, mm -hmm. all right, when you get used to that, you always want to follow th that particular path, mm -hmm. you know. And then in that case, you don't want everyone to allow the spirit to work the way he wants mm. to work maybe in different situations mm. all right so someone can get used to how the spirit is working mm -hmm. and because he's used to that you know he's just going i mean on that on that path not allowing the holy spirit to move because there are different situations and there are there are several ways mm -hmm. that the holy spirit wants to move mm -hmm. he is not that he's not a one-way person mm -hmm. all right so we must allow that we must know how the holy spirit works mm -hmm. knowing that he doesn't work just in one way mm -hmm. all right and always allow him to work the way he wants to, to work. work not just sticking to what we know mm -hmm. or how we know he works mm -hmm. and that is where yesterday's topic comes in it begins with the, with holy, the spirit. holy spirit yeah. because if you are working well with him and your work with him is out of love and there's intimacy there will never be this kind of thing mm -hmm. we've not even heard that the real meat of today's discussion and our time is almost up. The thing is how the gifts of the Spirit. So let's read it and explain to us. Let's go. Gifts of the Spirit are the manifestations of the workings of the Spirit himself. Mm -hmm. They are not like abilities or virtues that he imparts to you mm. to use without him. Mm. Understanding this will change your entire life along those lines. Mm. Gifts of the Spirit are divine operations by which the Holy Spirit carries out our ministry in the body of Christ mm. to the world mm. for us through us. Mm. It is like a mother who carries a baby mm. from one place to the other. Mm. The baby changed location mm. but didn't work. Mm. But when the baby matures, mm. the mother no longer does that. Mm. This is why the Holy Spirit will cease to do that when the church matures mm. to exhibit our divinity, mm. he does the manifestation, not us. Wow. Let me say something. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm. You know, so as um, you keep teaching us, a time will come that the gifts or the, the operations of the spirit in us will cease. Mm. Okay, but for now, because the church is not yet matured mm. to live as a divine beings that we are, mm -hmm. he will continue to carry out the work we are supposed to do mm -hmm. as divine beings. Mm -hmm. He will continue to carry those works through us. Mm. All right, but 
this is not going to last long. When we mature, mm -hmm. and that maturity is it's, it's set to happen, mm. the church will surely mature mm. because it is in the way that the church will mature. Mm. So by all means, the church will mature, mm. meaning that it is going to get to that point where the Holy Spirit is not going to operate through us again mm -hmm. or those manifestations they will be there all right, but it's not going to be the spirit doing it through us. Mm. It is going to be us doing it mm. as the divine beings Hallelujah. as we are. Wow. Well, I think when we got here the last time, I didn't get time to read that scripture. Again, we're here in just like 30 seconds. But let me read it again to you because when my wife said that um, the gift will cease, it's something challenging for people to conceptualize. But like she said, the church will surely mature. If you get it from a simple explanation, it's not difficult. It, like the, what we read in the Man's Peter. If you are a child, your mother does human things for you, washes you, feeds you, does all these things. But when you grow, <laughs> feeding is supposed to be done, but no more by your mother. I catch it. We are born again as sons of God, divine beings. We are supposed to manifest as knowledge, manifest as uh, expression of God's will, manifest as power. Manif you get it? But until we grow to be able to express this divinity as individuals, the Spirit does these divine things through us. And that's what is called the gift of the Holy Spirit. So let's take a read at them. From verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 13, NIV says that, Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. So this is an assurance that this thing will happen. Ours is to find out when. Let's go. Verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, and if you study the, the Greek word used in the King James, it's teleo. That's when maturity comes. And that's the same word used in Ephesians 4.13 when it says that till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. That's the word teleos. So when teleos comes, when we arrive at the perfect man in terms of maturity, so when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childhood behind me. Verse 12. For now we see only a reflection as in a the mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So that stage is coming. And when that stage comes, the Holy Spirit, he is not going to leave us because we are one with him forever. But then we are now going to live our divine life as his expressions. Praise God. I believe that we have explained this. So this is how the gifts function. They are not your gifts. So don't take off. I'm going to operate in the gift. I said, we'll come to that place. You don't operate in the gift. It is the Holy Ghost who operates the gifts in you. We'll come to that uh, to explain that in another episode. Well, I think our time has caught us up. Pray with us and at least I want to receive Christ and then we'll close. So if you are watching us today and you've not received the life of Christ, this is your opportunity. Mm. You need to believe with all your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead mm. and then you confess him as the Lord of your life. Mm. If that's what you want to do, you want to make this confession after me. Mm. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart mm. that you were raised from the dead. Mm. I declare you, Jesus, mm. as the Lord of my life. Mm. I am born again. Mm. I am now a child of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Wow, wow. Thank you so much. I've done that with all your heart. It is settled in your consciousness. You are born again. Contact us and help you to grow. Get planted in the Bible teaching and participate in church and remain in it till Christ comes. Right, so this is how much I'm permit us for today. We are surely going to come to you in our next episode. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.